today's video, we survived 100 days in Minecraft, except we're in a fantasy world. Our goals for the video are to create a civilization, become one of the strongest players on the server, and kill all five bosses of this fantasy world. Every 20 days, there'll be a new boss for us to face head on, even if we're not prepared. If we survive till the end, watch till the end of the video to find out. Also recently, we rebranded. This used to be our character, and now it's this. So if you guys could hit that subscribe button, it'll mean the world to me. Finally, hit the like button for the algorithm, and let's get straight into it. Days 1 to 5. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This map is kind of looking crazy right now. I didn't even know how this fantasy world was gonna look like, but honestly, I'm kind of digging it. The first thing we decide to do is obviously get your boy some wood. Now, a little bit of context prior to everything is this is in fact on an SMP and I was waiting for my friend to hop on. I don't think I mentioned that enough. A lot of my challenges are on mini servers, but for some reason on my end, I wasn't exactly lagging, but Bite on the other hand was lagging his butt off. Back to what we were doing. I was trying to get some wood and a creeper tried to jump us. Nice. I didn't die, all right? <laughs> Then afterwards, we got some tools, started mining a bit, and we upgraded to better tools. We're gonna need this stuff, trust and believe. With this fantasy world challenge, there's actually a bit of a twist to it as well. Every 20 days, there's a boss that we have to face and survive within the harsh world. And preparations basically begin starting from day one. This includes the increments 20, 40, 60, 80, and finally 100. But the boss is getting more and more difficult to actually kill. The first boss that we're gonna have to kill on day 20 is known as the Alchemist. Basically, right when we hit day 20, a boss will spawn in our location and we're gonna have to fight it. From me just straight up remembering, I'm pretty sure this is from the Blue Skies mod. And I'm not gonna lie, the bosses in that mod were actually pretty difficult, so I'm a little worried about this. Oh my god, there's a skeleton. Shortly after advancing our tools, we got attacked by a skeleton. How annoying. So we actually fled into this thing that I think was a greenhouse. I wanna see what's inside, Ow. to be honest. There's just flowers in here. I'm gonna die. You should I come, in here. come in here. So I'm not exactly sure. That's just what it looked like. And then the skeleton broke in like it was invited or something. Nobody wants you here, bruh. And what made things even worse is he had multi-shot. I was literally at one and a half heart and Bite was at two hearts remaining. We needed food and we needed that stuff ASAP. After we dealt with the whole skeleton situation, we basically went out to look for food, but then we got chased by really fast mobs. No, like I'm dead serious. Look how fast that thing's going. So instead we decided to wait the night out. Lagging. It's not safe, bro. It it's happen. not safe. Oh my God. <sighs> Dude. Oh, that's another one. That's another one. That's another one. Oh. <laughs> On the second day, we actually decided oh, to explore fine. because most of the mobs would have been dead by the sun already. Oh my god, there's a baby zombie. And we found ourselves a ruined portal. There, we found this thing called the Keystone of Oblivion. And also found ourselves the dirt shack. And I used the furnace in there to smelt some coal for torches. Listen, okay, we ain't even go mining yet. I need coal somehow. And look at this cute raccoon. Aww. As I mentioned earlier, the mod pack is super laggy and Byte kept reconnecting and disconnecting, which got a little bit annoying, so I had to turn off features like the minimap. If we were gonna have any chance of beating the first boss, the alchemist, we were gonna need food, so we had to find something fast. There literally weren't any animals around, which is kind of annoying, and then we explored until we found a village. There's a little piston machine. We slept in it as well. No, not the piston machine, inside the village. Am I gonna get him? That's what I meant. Added to that, we also found ourselves a disco villager, rob him of his disco -ness and also nab some of the food that they had. Oh, and look at that, that's a goddess statue. That's kind of neat. Oh, right, I forgot to mention that there's also these things called raids that happen every once in a while. Honestly, the village wasn't a bad place to start off, not to mention there's a bunch of villagers we can potentially trade with. It was a really good safe haven, or so we thought. Like you though. Bro, <laughs> it just picked up a villager and started munching. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> I do now. Oh my gosh. Oh, what if it- Wait, 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 wait. Just mad loot here. Because when it kills the villagers, it drop. It just ate an iron golem. No shot, bro. Wait, it's after me. It's I after me. It's after me. Dude, it's freaking after me. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Until a raid begun. And I'm not talking about no pillager raid. I'm talking about a cyclops raid. Yeah, you heard me right. The moment we got really comfortable with where we were basing, we got attacked by a cyclops. Look at that beast munching on the civilians like it's fried chicken or something bro it even ate the golems we had to run into a house to find shelter i could literally hear it munching them outside where is it oh it's over there now oh my gosh bro and it's dead. Oh, oh, oh. oh it's getting kind of close it's feeling like attack on titan all over again man 
It's 57 hearts. Oh my. Should we just run? Should we run? We should run. It has a run. total of 150. Unfortunately, Bite at this time was still lagging and he started getting consumed by the Cyclops itself. I thought he was gone for. So we parted ways. While the Cyclops was going around eating the newfound friends we made and Bite, by the way, we basically just booked it. I was not letting no dumb Cyclops ruin this challenge for me, even if it meant what leaving a friend hell? behind. There were these weird thorny bushes everywhere. It was nuts. We also decided to jump this little sandworm thing that was consuming the wildlife here. Honestly, it was probably for the best. We also found ourselves a little bit of a house and slept through the night. Upstairs, we found some more wheat blocks and iron armor. Don't mind if I do, because this was going to help us with that first boss of ours. And then we also found ourselves a wizard tower. It blew up. Then we found a cool volcano looking oh, thing. Look Days 5 to 10. There are whales. Look at them. They're so cool. We also found ourselves a mushroom house. We were not alone. They were mushroom crowd brutes. Brutes? Are y'all serious? That's crazy. This ain't the nether, bruh. Why we got to deal with brutes in the overworld? And while trying to loot the mushroom house, itself they also brought me down to almost my death i was going on the way that i thought my friend did but it also decided to chase me off the entire building and i almost died again twice before we even hit day 10 i'm not gonna lie to you guys bro this world this little fantasy world of ours is relentless this ain't as easy as an isekai i can tell you that much oh we also found dinosaurs as you can hear they're not really too happy about outsiders so i kept my distance i think they were only trying to protect their kids though so they didn't seem that bad but again i didn't want to test my luck because i don't really have a lot of that within these challenges i have thrown curveballs every bit but you know what who needs luck when you have another cozy looking house that i could probably chill at for a bit i also decided to kill a bunch of cows because i needed leather for a backpack those are necessary trust me when we start getting loot you're gonna see why it's a little bit of a subliminal message from future adrian voicing over this then i ended up finding another village of some sort and we all got the leather that we needed the only thing remaining from the backpack recipe that we were missing was our friend string oh i also decided to live in this cozy village i don't know i just kind of like it it grew on me let's just hope there's no cyclopses around for the sake of both of us we don't want any of that then we started working on building a bit of a base of ours and maybe even a farm Got some animals set up, got some defenses for raids, and we actually had ourselves a roommate. His name was Eleanor. He seemed chill. And then I heard this really weird explosion. This is where it got a little weird. We followed the explosion and it led us to this place called the graveyard. Well, it looked like a graveyard, so that's why I called it that. But the loot there? Oh my gosh, bro. Listen, it's not overpowered stuff, but it will definitely help us. And we got the string we needed from there. You know, grave robber or not, I'm getting stacked up right now. Get your grave digging up, not your funny up. We also got ourselves some iron enchanted stuff, golden apples, and a bit more stuff. I'm also gonna ignore all the human remains that were in there. We ended up crafting the backpacks and commenced the base building. Iron Golem also scared the out of me. Decided to also make the walls out of cherry blocks and the floor out of cobblestone. Thought it looked kind of nice. We mounted some more of the area so there was enough to build. No judging, I'm not that good of an architect, all right? Then again, I think my biggest skill in Minecraft is exploration and that's not really saying much here. Ran out of cherry wood, so I want to get some more. I also felt from a tree and almost died all right damn forget the bosses i'm the biggest threat of the series on a real note though i really do need me some feather falling boots this is not gonna work out if i keep dying like that i also decided to bring back a cherry tree sapling and plant it at home and after a bit more building this was the finished piece what you guys think all right all right i know what you're thinking it looks lame as hell okay i'm not the best builder but your boy's trying you know days 10 to 15 these days were flying by like it was nothing and we really do need to make some progress one of our villager friends that actually used to live here turned into to a zombie villager poor tisha she had so much to live for found this well that also led into a huge cave system that we decided to explore we actually found something in there but i'm gonna save that for later besides the special thing we found we also found ourselves a skeleton spawner even with our shield in hand we got bodied after that i decided to explore the savannah a little bit I think that's what the biome's called, at least. I saw something in the distance, and there was some knight or, like, a guardian to it. I don't really know how to better explain it, but it looked cool, and I wanted loot. I tried going near, but there were creeper babies trying to blow us up to smithereens. What the heck is a creeper baby? Also ended up encountering a bit of a weird creeper farm. Yeah, I am making this up. Look at it. And from the looks of it, it was also a bit of a pillager fort. There were two vindicators at the top, which brought me down to two hearts. Crazy, yo. Magic pillagers? But I assassinated them, lured the place, and dipped. Look at these little kangaroos. He's 15 to 20. We were given the coordinates to the first boss location. Well, at least the place where we could fight the boss that was kind of interesting. We took some time to actually get there. So we finally did reach there. After reaching the location, we ended up finding a bastion. I'm not kidding, by the way. There was a bastion in the overworld. It can make sense, bro. What the heck is going on in this fantasy world? But there he was, the 
Alchemist. The first boss for this 100 days event was triggered. And I think what made things even more annoying is that he disappeared after a while because he went into the Bastion. Like what? Kind of have mixed feelings about it because I mean, he does do a lot of damage. I'm telling you, my arrows did not work on him. He disappeared and go even lower into the Bastion. I could hit my shot, bro. Where did he go? Hello? Did he go invisible? What is this? He had to go down here somewhere. I'm guessing he went in here. There he is. By the way, it's super dark in there, so there's a bunch of mobs as well. Talk about third party in. After such a back and forth fight, I literally had to use one of my golden apples. I had to face this guy off. I can't even comprehend how much more difficult the other bosses are going to be. And even though he almost killed me, I had to list this challenge. What? 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 Wait, one more. Oh my gosh. Where did he go? Where did he go? Get over here, bro. One more hit. What? Bro, you're literally dead. Oh my gosh. And we got the last hit. We finally won. Yeah, after that, I was basically done. So we dipped from those horrid caves and found ourselves a huge windmill. We found ourselves another one of these giant mushrooms with some diamonds at the top. And this thing called the unholy grail and it advised us not to drink it. So we drank it instantly all right all right i kind of regret it we took a huge amount of damage like jesus maybe i should lay off the experimenting at least for now we also encountered a dragon and had to hide underground i tried escaping it but it tailed us relentlessly during the mining trip to escape the dragon we ended up finding this thing called the ancient tomb there's a spawner in there and a zombie brute cage and eager to kill me i see your bloodlust i could see it in your eyes found a tattered book that would give me hella levels you know damn well i'm gonna be using that i found a ring that i put on this should help me a bit with surviving I also decided to kill the zombie brute. Then I continued exploring cause I was not risking it and getting killed by some dragon. I'm sorry, but the overworld, like up there, it's above limits at the moment. Interestingly enough, we also found ourselves a strange underwater area and I found this thing called the will of the ocean, which had some crazy stats on it. You guys can pause the video if you want to see it. Definitely recommend taking a look at what it actually does. Cause while recording this, I know damn well I didn't. <laughs> and then I found myself a second chest, but on my way, I found a goblin trader. Look at this guy, reading and shit. My next goal was to go to the nether, so I had to find a lava pool. But first I'm gonna explore a bit and find some structures that are naturally spawning. If you guys didn't know, in normal Minecraft, you can actually find somewhat built portals and basically fix them up. At least that's what my hope was to find. Then we ended up here, in this slime island. Not exactly sure how we got here. And then we saw ourselves a sea serpent. If you thought that was crazy, there was a whole leviathan lurking in those waters. I had to be careful escaping this place on a boat. Honestly surprised I even did it in the first place. But your boy did it. I escaped and got onto land safe and sound. We also found ourselves a lava lake. Then I realized I had not enough diamonds to actually mine the obsidian, which is kind of dumb of me. So I ended up using the lava water bucket trick. And boom! We got ourselves the nether portal. All that remained was a flint and steel. Luckily, there was gravel behind me. And then we entered the nether. We first found a castle looking thing. Not the nether castle, but it looked like it was made out of blackstone. Blaze rods, not through the spawner, through one of the off blazes in preparation for the ender dragon. Because we did need to beat that at some point as well. And then look, we found ourselves the nether castle. I was worried because I'm sure there are creatures here that want us dead. I decided to put on the ocean relic thingy. Ta-da! Anyways, we still needed blazes. We finally found ourselves a spawner and I got a attacked by my little mushroom minions i don't know why i said my they're, they're not mine they're not my mushroom minion they're there to kill me the minions chased me away for a bit and i had to retreat then this blaze almost decked me i'm at half a heart anyways we got a bunch and i feel like every new thing that we do we get slowly closer and closer to death very stuff honestly i'm gonna just try my luck elsewhere because this place is filled with a bunch of mobs that i have no idea about i also got attacked by this wraith looking thing and then there were these flowers that actually burn you if you stand on them vegetation gone wrong bro weird stone golem things that started throwing babies at me and the golems were pretty terrifying themselves too after doing some more exploration we ended up finding a pig themed structure itself kind of looked like an egg to be honest looking at this creepy thing staring into my soul as if i'm terrified to die here yeah it's pretty accurate we also ended up looking at the top chest and we found ourselves our first netherite ingot of the series then i looked down in hopes to find more netherite <laughs> nope look at the masses of piglin brutes down there waiting to slaughter my guts you're crazy i'm not going down there you go down there also ended up finding this thing called the vain goblin trader his trades weren't too bad actually but i didn't have the stuff for it found this animal called a bucky it's so cute look at its nostrils I accidentally smacked it and killed it oops misclick 
Then we found this horrible biome. It's literally a biome made out of flesh. It's such a disturbing thing to witness, but we also found ourselves another nether temple here with some gold, which would be good for trading, and another netherite scrap. The back chest had bombs in it, yep, and a tattered thingy which I used for experience. I threw a bomb to test it, maybe a little too close, but they work! I confirmed it. This is an embarrassing clip of me trying to trade with a pigman. Anyways, I leave this place in embarrassment and get latched on by a demon mosquito. I hate this place. Ate a hog lion, but then my screen started looking like this. Yeah. Found another one of these egg looking things and more netherite in the top chest. I finish up the trip to the nether with ours with trading with some piglins. Got ourselves a few pearls and then they decide to hop out and almost demolish me, but I got out in time. Cause your boy's built like that. Kidding, it's just pure luck. Days 25 to 35. We went back to the nether portal and returned home safe and sound. Explored a few dungeons and I ended up finding some diamonds. There was an annoying silverfish spawner which also got in the way, but underneath it was a chest with diamonds as well. This was definitely going to come in handy for the day 40 boss. Then I mined the diamonds I originally found and got jumped by zombies. What nuisances. I like that word. More diamond ore. This mining trip might actually be worth it and on our way back to the surface, we found some more diamonds. This new terrain generation is going crazy, I'm not going to lie. I mean just look at how many ores are around these caves, it's insane. Then I found a spawner and it summoned a demon. I blocked it off so quickly. Still peek to check it out though. It was Elton! That's literally what it's called. So we started attacking him and that was the final hit. We got like four achievements for just slaying Elton, which was insane. We also ended up finding some sort of a shuttle down here. This place looks so surreal. We decided to grave rob a bunch of random stuff and found this strange home it looked like. Besides the wraiths that were trying to, you know, bite me, it was pretty barren. At that point, I decided to head back to my base and find out that the village was raided by two orcs. Not just one. I literally look out my window and I see one staring into my soul. They both came out of nowhere and whacked the house walls down. I hid as soon as possible and I dug into the wall because we needed to collect their stuff. So I decided to use this strat and we took the stuff and dipped. You're funny if you think I'm gonna get eaten by some orc, alright? I'm not bite. I'm kidding, it was actually really sad that he died. We did, however, end up needing a change of plans. We decided to go to the trees that were right above the place and also managed to rescue two villagers. That way the village would never die because we can make those two villagers reproduce an entire civilization. Kidding. I think. We begin building the treehouse. Orc proof in case there is another raid because they'll be down there and we'll be up here. The raid works randomly whether I'm at home or in the middle of nowhere, so I'll have to stay out on the lookout. Decided to craft up some of that diamond armor from the loot we got from mining, then continued to build the treehouse of ours. There were also swarms of phantoms stacking up outside the place. That got kind of annoying really, really quickly. The village we once used to call home that lives underneath us will be forever in shambles. Poor villagers slain by the orcs and the creatures during the raid. It will never be the same down there ever again. Alongside all that, we also decided to make a few lookout points. Also, I had this weird idea where we can make an obsidian base by the end of these hundred days. I don't know if we're actually going to get to that though. That's a little difficult, especially since I should probably be focused on the day 40 boss instead of all this extra stuff stuff so that's sort of what we did we decided to go back to the nether to test my rng with the netherite stuff we got a few more scraps from the chest but nothing crazy we also found ourselves a nether ship and there was sea serpents within the nether scary do these things even count as sea serpents do, do i call them magma serpents i'm in so much confusion dude i also realized for some reason my armor was also gone i'm maybe it broke i don't know i'm honestly not sure where it went I think it might have broken from the damage, but then we just craft this stuff. But inside the ship, we also found ourselves some netherite boots. And I made myself some more armor. Just for the meantime, until I figure out what the heck happened to the old pair of armor. Yo, there's so much gold in here. A Bastion Remnant map? Stone sword? Why? Why are there so many swords and bones in here? And a, and a globe? Grab these real quick. Damn, I'm looking nice as heck, bro. What the hell? My armor is still missing though. I don't know how. I swear I made like a pair of diamond stuff right before I went to the nether. And now it's just gone. It's not even in my backpack. That's crazy. I'm gonna uh, make some temporary armor for now. I think that's probably the best thing to do. At least with these little sea snakes. I Where is the rest of my diamonds? Okay, well, I guess iron and gold is gonna make one more of these. Boop, boop. All right, no gold. Screw it. We'll do it like this. Is that a... Okay. I, how do I make the netherite? I forgot how to build one of these. Oh my gosh. I... What is it called? A smithing table, no? Yeah, it is a smithing table. How the heck do I... Oh, uh, it's a two by two. <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude. How did I forget this? My helmet. I should probably put that back on. Yep, this is looking good. Let's get out of here. I don't really like the vibe this place gives. Long nether trip, we went back to the overworld. And a ghost attacked me. 
while I was looting this graveyard. Days 35 to 40. Found myself a gatekeeper to a new dimension. I need to work on that myself though. Also got zapped by the wither effect trying to leave my house. Was something trying to keep me in here? It was kind of weird. Also found this really strange tower. Paraglided right off of it. Ran up to a dead dragon. Yeah, it's, it's dead I think. Can't do nothing to me if you're dead and gone. But as you know, the big event is coming in. Day 40 is when I fight the next boss and we needed to prepare. The thing about this boss is it actually has minions. Not just one, but multiple of them that actually chase after me, which is really annoying during the fight. But after a bunch of exploring, we finally found ourselves the village. Now this village isn't any normal village. This is where the boss lives. Look at him sitting on his little throne. This was war. Our village is one troop, which is me by the way, versus their entire village. I wish Bite was here to help. Rest in peace, Bite 2022. And the leader of that group is called King Big Belly. No, I'm serious. That's actually what he's called. Throughout the entire fight, we tried getting close to King Big Belly, but his minions kept jumping us. He also laid down this electric beam that would hit us and damage us throughout the fight. So I need to find some sort of cover. Luckily, it was a village and there were a bunch of houses. After I set up in one of the houses, I started bow spamming and it worked for a while until I realized there were also mage minions against them. And it was regenerating health. Basically throughout the fight, these mage minions spawn in and then they start regenerating King Big Belly. And so I had to eliminate them before they could regenerate. So I can't just stay cooped up in a house. Shoot. So obviously your boy had to take them out. Even in the house, he could zap the heck out of me. So I had to be careful. Near the end, we had really low health and I went so up close and personal that I smacked him with my axe mid explosion that he wanted to use on me. I don't know about y'all, but I don't think I want to find out what would happen if that explosion actually hit me. I'm just saying. Oh my gosh. finally holy and then we defeated king big belly yeah he's gone now the rest of the duration we just basically explored around and made sure we collected all these masks days 40 to 55 i ended up traveling all the way back home safe and sound plus i needed a place to store all the spoils of our war at least i think it counts as a war even though i was the only soldier on my side but then again the only two people or civilians within my nation are the two people i have trapped up here that are made to reproduce so i think the blame's on me on this one then i realized where the armor went when i went to my nether strip i left it at home i'm such a klutz yo and then we made ourselves full netherite let's go these loot chests have been blessing me up quick time also ended up making these things called tungsten tools i'm probably butchering that but i also made some weapons because basically this stuff is netherite level so don't mind if i do i didn't even realize it until now thanks to not enough items and i found it on the ceiling of one of these nether dungeons and i made this thing called a tungsten hammer Yep, I'm not too fond of hammers, but the damage on this thing is a whole nother story. Mending on my chest plate just in case. These bosses are pretty hard. Now, another reason I actually chose this village in specific was actually right underneath. You remember that well we explored? Yeah, apparently, the next boss we had to face was actually down there. It's a thing I didn't want to show you guys until later. But the thing about this boss is they are actually a really heavy hitter. So we're going to need some golden apples. So I went tree chopping. One for just regular wood, but mainly because we needed apples. After that, it also carried into exploring a bunch of the other structures and jacked their loot too. Look at this underground village. It was sick. I never thought I'd see the day when I'd find a village that's underground. Like who even comes up with this stuff? I found a diamond hoe there. This place honestly seemed more like a labyrinth than a village though. And then another cyclops but i ran from it this time i don't know why i said this time i run from them every time then we found this guy again and i bought the stuff i needed from him this opened a portal to this place called the blue skies dimension remember the alchemist we fought on day 20 yeah that, that's where this guy's from a gigantic bug attacked me as well it burned me a few times too but i ended up killing it the dimension got a few updates since the last time i played on this this dimension has a lot of creatures that seems pretty hostile i didn't even have much of a reason to be here in the first place so after exploring around for a structure i had no luck then i found this webby tree it was scary looking i think it was some sort of spider's lair we went inside tried breaking something and i guess our tools don't work here very well i kept moving one foot to the next found a venomous spider and it it almost killed me yeah it was right then and there where i took my leave though i did get a little bit lost but eventually i found my way out of the place it's not my fault all the walls here look exactly the same days 55 to 60 a good portion of this was actually going back in the recordings and finding out where the portal was that i decided to like enter from but we finally managed that we also decided to go back to the normal world again to prepare for the next boss we also got raided and i hid in a wall and waited literally all i did I did not want to deal with any more life-threatening situations. Or so I didn't want to. 
This thing is called the Lamictin that was summoned at my location. I hate this custom rating system. It literally drags any boss or mob into the game, spawned on top of me, and the fight commences. Who in the hell put this on the idea board? Honestly, for a while, he just stared at me. And then he summoned these weird squids and demons. They're demons, I tell you, bro. So I waited because I wasn't trying to die to no air or something, all right? And then it ended up dying. It was intense, but somehow we pulled through. This netherite stuff is really coming into clutch. We went and located the ferris rot not i am so butchering that i'm so sorry basically mordecai is from league which was also the third boss of this challenge because it is closing into day 60. there he was one attack of his destroyed my shield instantly it was crazy my strat was to make as many shields as i possibly could then i started dodging his attacks and finally i managed to get the last hit on him i was actually terrified this would be it for the 100 day challenge thank god it wasn't and then i traveled back home 40 more days to go baby day 60 to 75 we made it pretty far in the village also gets attacked by pillagers after that the ferris decided to attack the village as part of a raid we just killed that thing after trying a little bit i was like nah this isn't worth it we evacuated on a real note coders the one that actually coded the the little raid thing what the bro really i'll get that stuff fixed ran over to a different civilization elsewhere this society was not surviving that we'll come back here later maybe just to check if they're still alive we wanted to prepare for the ender dragon fight i literally don't even remember where i put those darn eye of enders oh wait i found it well i found one. <laughs> oh, look at this little dragon thingy whack found ourselves a spooky haunted house looking thing it honestly gave me chills just looking at it okay bit of a jump scare in the beginning but i found this one room with blood in it then it was just bones and remains after remains. I didn't like the vibe the house was giving me. It kind of felt like a horror movie right now. Look at these killers in the making. Scary stuff. Despite that, we still continued our journey. It took forever, but we finally made it to the Ender Dragon. It was time we eliminate Minecraft's regular boss, which was basically Day 80's boss in the first place. Unfortunately, this one doesn't get summoned on top of us. We actually have to go to the end for that. But look at how the end looks. It's so different. Also, why do we spawn so far away from there? Is that a mutant enderman that I see? What the heck is going on here? There were so many situations where I was close to dying. This is way too much anxiety. And before you knew it, we killed the ender dragon. Honestly, with the stuff we have, it made it a lot easier. It's a bit of a relief compared to the other bosses, to be honest. There's also a whole new biome here. Honestly, way too much content here for me to explore. I don't even know where to begin. The end looked beautiful, stunning even. Then I decided to go, oh hey, look at the floating pink lily pad, let's jump onto it. And then the challenge was almost over, because I almost died from that thing. Like a lily pad? That's the threat to my life? It's probably just my decision making skills, let's be real here. Don't worry, I made it down, somewhat safe and sound, and just look at this forest. It's like a whole new fantasy world in itself. I found these cool flashy looking crystals, guess this is what they meant by taste the rainbow. Another mutant enderman was found here. Anyways, I found a tower. And I don't think it was the end city with the ones that have the elytra in them, unfortunately. Up there was actually fireworks for our elytra, but no elytra. But there were diamonds, and I think there was enough at this point. I don't believe we'll be needing any more diamonds beyond this, unless there's like a diamond golden apple or something. We continue our search for our elytra. It's our right. I found this end city. Wonder if the elytra is here. Totem of Undying, and holy, I was being thrown around like a volleyball. We got so many totems of undying and all these cool items. Unfortunately, no elytras. Like, what? They are doing me dirty right now. I don't know how I feel about this, but basically, we couldn't find it. So, we just decided to abort the mission. I had one more thing I wanted to do before the last boss fight, though. Days 80 to 90. Back in the overworld, I actually wanted to do the warden fight. Yeah, we're actually on that version of Minecraft. So, we had to go underground and just, you know, basically mine a bunch. My moral started lowering because of how long this took and I ended up realizing after all that that we're on an earlier version of Minecraft that's just with mods. The thing that gave me really false hope was there was a mod that actually added all the stuff for the warden, but the warden itself. It was just adding like the little blocks it added in that new version of Minecraft. So despite all of our efforts of just mining and mining and mining endlessly in every direction until we could finally find ourselves either an ancient city or at least like, you know, the biome where we find the warden at. We got nothing. Yeah, it was just a big waste of time, really. So low key, your boy kind of got baited. I'm not going to lie. But there was actually one hope because I then looked into it and I found out that the ancient city actually does exist within a mod. This mod's goal was literally just to add the structure into Minecraft. And I was interested to see if the warden would actually be there. But we also had no luck finding that thing. It felt like I was recording a brain numbing montage just finding this thing. And I didn't find anything. So it was like 
no satisfaction whatsoever. It was just a waste of time. Days 90 to 100. Now, obviously, we're at the end of the series, but there was our final boss that I needed to kill. Now, I left this one because not only is it actually a really tough mob to beat, it's also a really visual mob, and in my opinion, it's one of my favorite bosses. The biggest issue with fighting this last boss is actually finding the creature, because from what I can tell, he only spawns in like icy biomes and is often hidden usually until you hear the sound cue. Now even the sound cue itself isn't the most clearest thing to actually listen to, so we had to go exploring for an ice biome, and all I could find is just vast majorities of random biomes, and then I did find like something similar to a snowy biome, but I don't think it count because the only thing that was there was like pine trees and a bit of snow, I don't know. The main thing I was looking for was this biome called the ice spikes biome, now if you could find one of those, that would be beautiful. But after so much exploring, we began exploring to where I believe the creature would actually be dwelling. Now, I don't know if this place is actually called the Ice Spikes Biome. I think it's a modded ice biome, but I think it still counts. Honestly, it's a terrifying creature, and I didn't want to take it too lightly. As you can see here, it was asleep. Look how cute it looks. It can't possibly harm me that much, right? Right? Wrong. I took the item, and it woke up. It froze me so many times. It was so annoying. I always have to one-up it and keep my distance. It was a crazy back and forth fight, but I finally managed to smack it around. And what can I say? It just couldn't handle me. And then it was defeated. For those that made it to the end of the video, you guys are the real ones, you know, watching it fully through. But I also wanted to tell you guys, I'm actually rebranding. This used to be my character, and now I'm turning into this. Let me know what you guys think, and if you want to see it in action, it's actually over by my Twitch. I'll be slowly transitioning, so keep an eye out for that.